an interesting. So what's the role of spaces and structures where we design an experience where we can kind of experience failure to help in the real world? Um, well, one of the, the final chapter uh, is called The Grit of the Arts. And, and there I, I look at the way in which grit is so critical. Grit, as Angela Duckworth, a psychologist down at the University of Pennsylvania, at the positive psychology there, describes it as one of the best indicators uh, for achievement in school age at children, more so than IQ or talent alone. Right? But grit is the ability to persevere in the face of failure feedback. And when you mentioned video games, and, and Fox is a, a great scholar at MIT Media Center there, and uh, Media Lab there, and you're making me think of actually when I was a child, I, I would play all these video games, and, and I was, I would actually you know fail at whatever level I was trying to get to, but there was something that would rise up in me when I would, to make me want to do it again, and I hadn't until this moment thought about how that is a simulator of sorts for the kind of grit uh, that's so critical in life in general. But I did challenge, like productively, Angela, in thinking about grid, because grid is one of the few things that you don't really, you can't really teach, <laughs> at least not yet. They haven't found a way. So my engagement with her was about the way in which the arts, and I would extend that to technology and, and video games and just the digital realm in general, uh, can operate as a simulator of sorts. In that chapter, and I'll, I'll just end by saying I offer a, a kind of a timeless example of this. Samuel Morse, the life of Samuel Morse is one that we know as a, that of an inventor who created the telegraph, but what people often forget, and as an art historian I don't, which is that he spent 26 years in the pursuit of being a painter of great renown. Right? He wanted to be someone like a Michelangelo or a Titian or a Rembrandt, and, but yet when he went to exhibit his paintings up and down, you know, from Boston to New York mainly, doing so put him in debt. He couldn't support his family. He moved to New York and said, well, if I am to live in poverty, I might as well be there as opposed to anywhere else. And the classic struggling artist. And when he hit this nadir and he didn't think he could continue as a painter, he converted the stretcher bars of the canvas into the telegraph itself. You know, And he describes in these extensive letters over his course of his life how the process of finding enough agency to figure out how you're going to move forward as you create a painting or, or anything else helped him with the grit required uh, to persevere and find the patent you know, for the telegraph. So th there's some examples of this that might be interesting. Yeah.